Hello students I hope you are all doing well in your studies as you all know that CBSE has released an additional question paper for the session 2324 and to help you gear up for the upcoming board exams we will be solving the same so without further delay let's jump right into the section A Let's read the first question. We need to identify an invalid identifier. This question is easy. I hope you know all the rules to design valid identifiers. Special symbols are not allowed in identifier, so this is an invalid identifier. Now let's look at the another examples. For is a keyword, but we have added here underscore, so it can be used as a variable. Look at the next example. While is a keyword, but here you can notice W is capital, so this can be worked as a identifier. Now, what about this identifier? True is a keyword, but here T is in lower case, so this is also a valid identifier. But we should always keep in mind that we should not design any confusing identifier like these three. we got conclusion that a is the correct answer this is an invalid identifier let's move ahead to the second question what is the correct way to add an element to the end of the list adding end of the list means it is a process of appending an item as usual i will repeat my suggestion to write all the functions and methods associated with string list tuple and dictionary on one paper so that you will remember all of them there is no method like add related to list then what about the remaining three these all are valid methods but what's the question we have to add an element at the end of the list for that you should have clear understanding of those three for appending atom we can use append or extend but append is used to append a single element whereas extend method is used to append a list of the elements so this is all about appending an atom if you want to insert an atom at any position you can use insert method in this way we got to know that we will be using append method so b is the correct choice now let's read the next question it is based on string slicing when we run this print statement we got this output how we will check it for this string here is the slicing part this is the starting and ending index we don't include so the slicing will start from the index 2 and it will go up to 5 look at the indices of the string we will be getting l c o and m now moving ahead to the second string here the starting will be 5 and ending will be 8 based on these indices we will be getting string m e then space and t in the print statement we are using concatenation operator so both the strings will get concatenated and finally we will be getting this output Hope you understood this explanation. It's time to discuss the fourth question. Which of the following statement is false? It is related to exception handling. Let's read the first statement. A try except block can have more than one except statement. I hope you know all the blocks we use for exception handling. For one try block there can be many except blocks which will be handling different types of exceptions. So from the syntax we understood that first statement is true. Let's read the second statement. One block of except statement cannot handle multiple exception. You know in exception if we don't mention specific exception it can handle any type of exception. What about the third statement? The finally block is always executed. Yes, it is true. Finally block is always executed whether the exception arises or not. Moving ahead to the last statement when 1 is equals to 1 is executed no exception is raised then let's try to execute this command you will be getting false we are not getting any exception because integer 1 is not equals to string 1 that's why we are getting answer false ultimately this statement is also true so the correct option is b this statement is false now we are at the fifth question We need to tell which statement will result in error. Let's check out the code. We are initializing one dictionary. So here is the key and the corresponding value. Similarly, this is the second key value pair. Look at the third key value pair. This is key and we have list as a values. 
Moving ahead to the fourth pair, we have key as a string and value as a tuple. In the first statement, we are printing the dictionary, so it will not give any error. Now let's check out the second statement. In this, we are going to update the value of the badminton by cricket. This is also fine. We can change the content of the list because it is mutable data type. Moving ahead to the next statement. Key is score means we are trying to change in this key value pair. Look at the values. We have values in the form of tuple. At the index 0, we have 77 that we want to update to 50. But you know, tuple is immutable data type. Modifications or updations it doesn't allow. So this statement will give error to us. So the correct option is statement 3. Let's read the next statement also. In this statement, we are trying to change the value of the PNO to 50. This is also fine. It will not give any error. So in this way, our correct option should be C. That is statement 3. Let's proceed to the next question. If you know the answer, pause the video and write the answer in the comments. Which pickle module method is used to write a python object to a binary file? We don't use first three methods, so ultimately the correct option is D. To write data, we use dump function and to read data, we use load function is case of binary files. This question was quite easy. I have one more suggestion, write all the functions and methods associated with all three files, text file, binary file as well as CSV files. It's time to check out the seventh question. The question is which statement will append the content of dictionary marks in dictionary student. Look at the options. We don't have add function. Even we don't have merge function. So from the given options, only one function is familiar that is update. So our correct option is D. Do you have any idea? Can we use plus operator in case of dictionary? Pause the video and let me know your views on this. Let's check out directly in the ID what we will be getting if we apply concatenation operator on the dictionary. We are getting error that we cannot use this plus operator in case of dictionary. We can use plus operator in case of string as a concatenation operator. It will concatenate the tuple elements as well as the list elements but we cannot use this plus operator in case of dictionary what's the reason for that i think it is not clear how it should handle duplicate keys and the conflicting values hope that is clear to you now let's move ahead to the next question which of the following is not a component of the math module we studied maximum functions of the math module in class 11 and some in class 12 too if you know the answer, you can skip this part and proceed. The first function is cell function. It is a part of math module. You know it will give the value greater than or equal to x. The next function is mentioned that is fabs. It gives the absolute value. Means if it is a minus 10, it will give plus 10. You have studied this in maths also. There is one more option pi. Pi is not a function, but it is a constant which gives the pi value. Hey then, we know now what is the correct option. It's B. Mean is not a function of math model. Time to check out the ninth question. What will be the output of the following code? Solve this along with me. If you know the answer, let me know in the comments. This question is designed in such a way which will confuse you. Alright then, let's solve this. First is length of L. The length of L will be 3. You can see here there are 3 elements of the list. So 3 divided by 2. If we calculate 3 divided by 2, we will be getting 1.5. Now let's calculate length of L of 0. At the 0th index, we have this string. Calculate the length of it. Look at the string carefully which is at the index 0. The length of this you will be taking as 9. We will consider one extra space here and one here too. 3 plus 3 6 7 is comma 8 and 9 now you will ask me if we don't consider that space then the length of l of 0 will be 7 if you will multiply 7 with 1.5 you will be getting answer which is not present in the option that's why you need to consider it as a 9 so considering the length of the element at index 0 9 ultimately we will be getting 1.5 into 9 
and the answer is 13.5 in this way after calculation the correct option is c 13.5 we are at the 10th question expand the following term these two terminologies are very important ppp is point to point protocol and voip is voice over internet protocol all right then let's move ahead to the next question which sql operator is used for pattern matching and it is like operator time to check out 12th question which python function is used for displaying only one result set from the sql table this is related to connectivity we have three types of fetch function fetch many fetch one and fetch all fetch all will return all the records fetch one will return a single record and in fetch many we can mention the number of records so based on the options we have correct option as d fetch one What's the 13th question? Which of the following file opening mode in Python generates error if file does not exist? I hope you have clear understanding of the file modes. In case of write mode and the append mode if file doesn't exist it will create a new file but in case of reading mode if file doesn't exist it will give error. So the correct option is R mode that is read mode. If you want to take screenshot of this you can take it and refer it later. All right, it's time to move ahead to the next question. What is the correct syntax of seek function? Here is the complete syntax for you. Seek means you know to find out. Seek function used along with file object and there are two parameter. First is offset. Offset is a number which specifies the number of bytes. and the second parameter is optional that is reference point it is a number which indicates the position of the file okay now tell me what is the correct option you are absolutely right it is a moving ahead and let's discuss 15th question which of the following statement is false let's read the first statement smtp and pop protocols are used in mail communication yes this is correct What's the second statement? URL of a page is not always same as domain's name. It is also true statement. What's the next statement? HTTPS is safer than HTTPP. Yes, it is a secure version of HTTP. So this statement is also correct. Now the remaining is the last one. Let's check out interlinking of collection of web pages is called internet. This is false statement you know interlinking of web pages is a website that was little easy let's move ahead to the next question dash protocol provides access to services hosted on a remote computer from the given options ppp and smtp we use for email communication ftp is a file transfer protocol so the remaining one is c telnet telnet is used to access remote computers Now we are at the last section that is assertion and reasoning. Read these questions carefully and try to fit the answers with these given options. So let's read the 17th one. For changes made to a variable define within a function to be visible outside a function it should be declared as global. This is related to function. If you all familiar with the concept of function this statement is true. Now let's read the reasoning for that variable defined within a function are local to that function by default yes we know that unless explicitly specified with the global keyword this statement is true if we look at the option a and r are true and r is the correct explanation for a so the answer for the 17th question is a by default any variable will be local to that block if you want to access the element outside the function we should make it global finally we are at the last question let's read it assertion is a binary file in python is used to store collection objects like list and dictionaries that can later retrieved in their original form using pickle module this statement is true we use pickle module for pickling and unpickling but let's check out what's the reasoning for it binary file are just like normal text file and can be read using a text editor like notepad this is false so if we look at the option 
C is the correct choice for us. A is true, but R is false. We cannot open binary file in a notepad. And there you have it, students. We have successfully tackled section A of the additional question paper. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends who might also benefit from it. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. In the next video, we will be diving into the section B of the same sample paper. So until next time, stay curious, stay healthy and best of luck with your preparations. I will see you in the next video.